Welcome everyone to the Smack Raw Podcast Great American Bash NXT episode, which is of course sponsored by Mountain Dew. This podcast will be commercial free in the main event. How's it going, you guys? Uh, I am your host, SES Vince. I am joined with uh, Mr. J Thunder, as always. This is what, like two, three weeks in a row now, sir? Like three or four weeks, actually, now. And you, uh, of you, ru- you ruined it. You ruined it. Why, <laughs> why are you? Why are you pulling your Mountain Dew, bro? Like they go, like they go sponsor it. I was I'm just playing kidding. off of the fact that they kept plugging Mountain Dew the entire episode. They really did. Like not I, me- like but, like I mentioned, the Great American Bash is back. But not only that, our boy Mister Eighty Nine Eighty Four and Real Petty R N is back. How's it going, my man? How do you feel? Where, What's where, good, where, Brodies? Where is he so I can point down? Uh, point to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he's he's right there, just like in the in, in our call. He's he's right down. What's there. good, the boy, man, the boy, and the tri- plugging tri- that fresh, back at it. fresh mm. new SmackRaw podcast uh, gear over there. I see you. Shit. Okay. Shout out to the baby mama and the kids. You know what I'm saying? The best Father's Day gift I've ever received. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I need one of those. <laughs> but I mean, clearly not with, with your uh, your handle. Your yeah. <laughs> I, I see she's taking to... orders. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll take mine as a black. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely need black. I, as you guys can tell, I always wear black. But like all jokes aside, we aren't really sponsored by Mountain Dew, but we are sponsored <laughs> by Belts hey, by Dan. Go ahead, sure check out Belts by Dan. Let them know the Smack Raw podcast sent you. They have a bunch of great high-end belts targeted at high-end collectors, similar to the ones you see on pro wrestling, uh, boxing, and MMA shows. Go ahead and check them out. Belts by Dan will hook you up. We are also found right here on YouTube.com slash Smack Raw podcast. You find us on our Facebook, on our Discord, on our Twitter on an IG, on our Reddit, on our Pinterest, whatever. We, we're just about everywhere, guys. But we're everywhere. also on WrestlingNewsWorld.com. You can find us there, and you can go ahead and find all your latest news, recaps, reviews, pay-per-view predictions, a bunch of great content on there with a bunch of great people. Thank you to Steven and Thomas that guested on our Unpopular Opinions uh, episode that we did a couple that we recorded a couple days ago. So thank you guys for joining that, and thank you guys for being like partners with Smack Raw Podcast. But uh, with that being said, guys, let's get into the show, and we start. Hey, before we hey before we get started, I just want to say one thing. Like, mm-hmm. hey, a lot of what y'all don't know is like none of us live in the same area except for <laughs> Jay and Vince. Right. But, like this is like one of the closest group of friends that I've had that I've never fucking been in the same room with. And I just want to let everybody know like how, how raw these dudes are, how much they still behind me, how much they checked on me, how much they gave a fuck when they didn't have to. So just want to tell you, I'm glad to be a part of the show and I love y'all for real. We love you too, man. We're glad to have you back. It's definitely, it's definitely good to have you back on the show. Like I got, I got air hugs for everybody. (laughs) You're big enough to get a couple of three or four air hugs in there. I can just give you a regular hug, like on a regular day, but, but R and I got you, bro. Air hug. I got you, bro. For sure. Bring it in for the real thing. Bring it in, bring it in. Uh, so but, yeah, bro, let's get to this. Let's get to this. Let's we, go. We started off hot with a Great American Bash Night One. We had the Fatal Four Way Elimination Number One Contenders Match between Tegan Knox, Mia Yim, Candice LeRae, and Dakota Kai. Guys, this match was a fucking Shh. banger. I love this match from the get go, and I thought it was kind of funny too how both. Uh, Candice LeRae and Dakota Kai, they just decided to roll out the ring and and have uh, Mia Yim <laughs> and, and they decided they was like, oh, well, uh, let me go, let me go, make sure that my uh, my ACL is still healed, you know. <laughs> For real, I think to me too, like the main thing about this match, like I think they needed to have this fire ass match, especially with Bailey and Sasha on the card and in the building. Like I think this match, I think this is the best match we've had for the second crop of women. This is the best match that they've all put on. So like it definitely I definitely was excited for it. And I'm I'm I was definitely hype about the outcome too. So let's get to it. We'll we'll talk about it. I so, was surprised about the outcome. 
Me too. Y'all know that's my girl. Both, <laughs> both of you guys and Matt Ritter from the Smack and Raw podcast, no relation. You guys, both, all three of you guys were surprised by the result. I really wasn't. So, like I was saying, Candice Array, she got a lot of offense in, but she was the first one eliminated. And if I'm not mistaken, she was ganged up for most of the uh, for most of the match yeah. by Mia and Tegan. So, that gave an excuse as to why she lost and a little bit of redemption for Mia Yim. She was the one that eliminated Candice Array in this yeah. match. So I like that. It feeds into stuff that's got set up for next week. That was I didn't like that she got eliminated first, but I didn't mind Mia pinning her because, like you said, they jumped her pretty much the whole time, so it kept her looking somewhat strong. And like you said, it set up stuff for night two or whatever. Yeah, well, honestly, based on how the match was structured and everything else that was built outside of it, I think it made perfect sense for Candice to be yeah. the first one to be eliminated. Um, after some miscommunication, uh, after the the elimination, I'm sorry, uh, Kai gets targeted by both of the faces and he starts to get beat down for a bit. She's able to weather the stone for a little bit, managing to get a little miscommunication between Mia Yim and Tegan Knox that allows Dakota Kai to get an O'Connor roll bridge pin on Mia Yim eliminates her and now we're down to two now we have uh dakota kai tegan knox you have history here two former best friends and not like some wwe made up oh there used to be best friends stuff these girls are legit best friends and tag team wrestlers i freaking loved it i feel like the match hit a completely different gear once it got to the, the final two and like you were guys were mentioning the the outcome was a surprise i been saying for the, like the last two weeks that the Kota Kai is the obvious choice to win this and to go ahead and face off against uh, Io Shirai for the title. They give us a little bit of a swerve. Tegan Knox picks up the victory with the shiniest wizard. She's the new number one contender. They really built it up. And even during the start of the match, they laid the groundwork for this outcome, saying that Tegan's never had an opportunity for the women's title. She, this right. is like she's been struggling every time, ever since she came to WWE, getting injured and being eliminated, uh, like being excluded from the first May Young Classic, then being in the second May Young Classic, and then being taken out via injury and not being able to finish the tournament. So, this is her being slowly built up. I thought it was a really good match. Uh, I'll start off with Jay. Uh, do you have any nitpicks, any like any things that you liked about the match, something that you didn't, just like some comments, some bullet points about the match? Um, to be quite honest with you, first of all, I love the fact that you're drinking a Harito. Uh, I love that. <laughs> um, While ma- wearing a Mexican Chicago Bulls shirt too, right? Oh, <laughs> uh, man. <laughs> anyway, um, there wasn't really much of a nitpick. Uh, there was more so just, you know, I, I just w- I'm more so just wanted to be made sure that I was able to enjoy the match because you know what Fatal Four Ways is always a it's not always Fatal Four Ways are not always the best matches to put mm-hmm. forward, especially right. for people. I mean, it's not like a Royal Rumble or anything like that. It's just literally a um, it could be a clusterfuck, and I'm happy that this match turned out great. I mean, I was a little bit surprised by the outcome, but because I, I kind of figured that Candice Lorray was going to win it because of the whole, you know, Gargano way, whatnot. Okay. But um, it worked out pretty good. Like, I'm happy for Tegan Knox. She got that comeuppance that mm-hmm. we've all been waiting for for the longest. So everything seems like it's going in order. So I don't have any nitpicks out of that. Aaron, well, what do you have any any points or notes about this match? Uh, really not. I mean, like I said, I I know everybody. I'm a Mia Yim hater, which technically I am, but like I thought that she carried a lot of this match, especially with her taking moves and the, some of the big moves mm-hmm. that she did. Like she definitely like workhorse this, especially the middle part of the match. Like I, I dug that, and like I said, I didn't have a problem with her pinning Candice at all, because like I mean, you gotta have to go back and forth. And then, like, y'all know my girl, Tegan's my girl. So, like, I was pleasantly surprised she got the win. And I'm kind of, I, I think they're going to put on a dope match, honestly. Like, I'm yeah, kind of pumped for that match for, for sure. sure. Yeah. Uh, just uh, quickly before we move on to the next match, I want to address what Jay was saying about, like, sometimes fade-to-forward matches can be hit or miss 
or multi-person matches can be hit or miss because it can be a clusterfuck at times. But I think the decision to make this an elimination match, like yeah. a couple of days beforehand, really added to the match because it makes sense. You know, you're going to eliminate Kano Sarai. She's a big threat there. Now the faces, you're going to target Dakota Kai as the heel. You go ahead and get a sneaky win over no. uh, Mia Yim. And then now you get down to the final two. So you're able to tell stories within a story. And I guess that sometimes it's the difficult thing and triple threats are fade of four ways because there's That's... always a point in the match where there's someone rolled out on the outside and just basically yeah. resting while and that's my thing like any multi-man matches to me are better when they're elimination because like you said there's oh always that little there's all that damn that little law where there's like one person that got like chopped in the chest and like lays out on the floor for like 20 minutes and shit while they're trying to get spots in mm -hmm. like to me like it definitely that helped it out and i think it pushed the story for it too for sure for sure i thought it was great i felt like Tegan Knox was made to look like a legit star coming out of this match yeah. and a credible challenger. I don't know about threat, but challenger to uh, uh, to Io Shirai. I'm going to, this next match, I'm going to leave it to RN and, and let him take the reins. We had Timothy Thatcher taking on Only Lorcan, and I feel like Only Lorcan was a great opponent for Thatcher to sh highlight and showcase everything that he does in the ring with, with his entire style. So, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you take the wheel here, here, man. Talk, talk I mean, to us I, about you, this match. You pretty much said it, like we said. I think it was maybe my last show that I did before I took my little hiatus. While we were talking about how Oni Lorkin and Danny are like those tough, strong hands that can have a great match with anybody, and they complement mostly everybody's style because they're kind of brawlers and they can go back and forth. And this match right here is what I've been screaming at y'all about with Thatcher, like. He is the real fucking deal. Like, on the mic, in the ring, his toughness, his grit, even though he has that slower kind of plotting style, it's mm -hmm. still, like, it still keeps you on the edge of your seat because you don't know what type of mission he's going to he's gonna pull out, where he's going to pull something out from, those slaps, everything. Like, this match, like, you already know, like, this is my match of the night for sure. Jay? Um, like I said, I'm I, me and Aaron were talking about this before we even started recording. Like I, I knew this was like gonna be one of the one of the good matches of the night. Like I, I'm I'm a big fan of of technical wrestling, even though I'm a big guy. Yeah, I love the big the big guy stuff, but the technical wrestling that's 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 fundamentals for wrestling. Me being a wrestler myself, um, have being able to do stuff on the mat is like very fundamental and it's very uh necessary mm -hmm. it's a necessity in your in your uh and your quality your quality and your caliber of a wrestler having that fundamental ground style wrestling mm -hmm. is much needed and i loved every moment of that match the slaps because of the fact that like brawling is a good thing as well because i love brawling any match that I've seen with the with the Rock and Stone Cold, they're nothing. They're nothing but showmen and, and, and brawlers. Yeah. But then adding on that type of style of uh, of Bret Hart and uh, Kurt Henning, I love yeah. it. Oh. I think that's what Thatcher throws off, and what he has that some people kind of take for granted is that he can do that hardcore brawling like he did in the cage with Matt Riddle, but he can also break your ass down. Straight, like you said, straight Bret Hart style and give you that catches catch, catch can, well, however the hell they say it, Catchers, chain uh, wrestling. Yeah, what <laughs> catches catch can or whatever chain wrestling too. Uh -huh. At the same time, and no, a lot of times those type of wrestlers they don't have that mixed set. It's you're either a brawler or a technical guy. You can't do both, and I think that's what sets stature apart from the roster and what makes him special inside the NXT with so many special guys. There. And not only in ring is he versatile, he's also very versatile in terms of his character. He switched up his character from the moment he debuted. He was kind of playing off like similarly how Pete Dunne was with Matt Riddle. He was doing that very well, I thought. And then now he's switched up his gear and his stance with his character outside the ring. And I think his demeanor is really, really great. Like, I agree with all, with both of you guys. This was a very good match. Thorkin brought the fight to him. But ultimately, Thatcher gets the win here with the Fujiwara armbar. And I loved it at the end. He goes ahead and just, like, yanks on it a little bit more after the, after the, the match ends. Just to, like punctuate that this guy means business and he's vicious and he doesn't really care about the your rules basically and again and the reason why it was 
a good finish because he targeted and worked on that arm from the start from start to finish. I loved it. I thought it was good. Uh, I don't think uh, NXT uh, Great American Bash Night 1 really had too many misses. I think they were all pretty much hits, even including yeah. this next match, uh, the handicap match between Rhea Ripley versus Robert Stone and Aaliyah. I, was, I didn't have my hopes too high for this match, but overall, I thought this was good for what it was supposed to be. It had yeah. good comedy spots. It was kind of like a palate cleanser, so you can go, go ahead and move on to the final two matches of the night. I thought it was well done. Uh, RN, what, what you thought about this, man? I personally love Robert Stone. He, he fucking stole yeah, that's, the show for me. I, I, that's what I was going to say. Robert Stone's fucking legit. Like, I don't know why they don't. I've been saying this. Me and you, we've had these conversations, especially in the group chat. Like, let him have her for real. Like, right. why can't she have her own, like, little stable one? this chicken shit manager where my idea is, like, let her still be face, Rhea, and let them do heel shit, like, to help her win. And she's, like, trying to rehabilitate him or, like, pissed off at him why she didn't then at the end it turns into a title shot for her and she turns full heel what's up exactly totally jay uh i, I know you love yourself so your good comedy spots man what you thought of this match i thought it was really good uh no i i thought that the, the comedy spots were really good um uh, first and foremost i want to apologize because i'm literally uh kind of uh frustrated right now because there's a mosquito literally <laughs> right in front of me. It's, uh, <laughs> there's it's... a mosquito right in front of me. Uh-huh. Um, but I'm not going to let it like distract me too much. Right. Um, but I enjoyed every moment of that match, except um, it kind of seemed like, I, like, I don't know, I kind of figured I wasn't really a fan of the ending of it. I kind of really? figured it could have been like something different. Instead of them both being in the uh, in the submission hole, I thought it was a really cool finish. I mean, me personally, was, no, don't get me wrong, it was cool. Would I have wanted it to end that way? Probably not. Right. I kind of see where Jay's coming from, honestly. But for but like you said, for it being what it was, it was a palate cleanser. Yeah, they a- didn't have shit for Rhea to do, and like have her, having her right before the main events and stuff. Yeah. Like it served its purpose for sure. Yeah, um, like it served its purpose. Like I, like I said, it's just. I that that I just wish they would have did something different with the finish. That's all. Like other than that, it was fun. Okay, cool. I mean, it, I, I totally get where you're coming from. I I get your point. Uh, the the one thing I will add, and then I saw this on my timeline, and I wanted to see what your guys' take on it. Uh, obviously, intergender wrestling is a big commodity uh, outside of WWE. Do you feel like this was a disservice to intergender wrestling by making it more like? like comical and less serious would you have preferred like a more serious tone between these two or do you think because of the story that was told it was okay in the moment i would prefer a more serious tone but i know in wwe this is all we're gonna get so you gotta take it for what it's worth and keep it moving take it for what it is okay you know um i feel like uh wwe is gonna continuously walk around the subject they're they're always gonna do that because that's what they've always done. Facts. Yeah. Um, but it, it I mean, like with the story that was told, it, it's what we got. Like, if yeah. we want to see intergender, if we want to see intergender wrestling, we gotta go somewhere somewhere else to watch it. But Facts. if we want to get the comedy or we want to get whatever, w, uh, NXT, WWE, or whatever, that's what they're gonna give us. Yeah. That's what yeah. I mean, that's a fair point. I'd like to think that maybe NXT or, like, down the line, we might be able to get some more serious tone intergender wrestling. I'm still hopeful. I'm an optimist, man. But, RN, like you were saying, you would have preferred this match to be a little bit more serious toned. Uh, I think the next match kind of satisfied that itch because Roderick Strong versus Dexter Loomis in NXT's very first ever strat match, I thought was a very serious tone match, even though... And, and like in the core, its core premise is pretty silly. Like a serial killer being attached to like this other guy, and he's like afraid of him. If you if you strip it in its bare bone, it's p- pretty silly. But the match itself was taken very seriously. Um, yeah. Even uh, before the match started, the they had a really good hype package that helped you explain what set up this match and what really bugs Roderick Strong about Dexter Remember, Lewis guys, that's there. It was less commercials. Remember, less, less commercials. Commercial. <laughs> so we got a whole, we got a whole, pa- uh, whole uh, video package 
and most of the match. So yeah, this this is a really long match. It actually went longer yeah. than I thought it was. Yes, it was. I thought this would be like a ten minute match if that and be done with. Right, but they gave it time that allowed it to breathe. I personally do enjoy some strap matches here and there. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite Eddie Guerrero matches is the Texas Bull Roll match between him and JBL at Grand yep. Rack and Bash. And commentary uh, alluded to that match, and yep. they made references to strap matches being almost like a common place at Great American Bash. Uh, the only thing I dislike about strap matches is, unfortunately, it brings back uh, some childhood traumas in my past. <laughs> I like to forget that strap. There was a couple times where Dexter Loomis and Roderick Strong hit each other with that strap, and I just jumped a little bit. I was like, ooh, that hit a little too close to home, you know? Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys get it. I mean, you guys probably know oh, where I'm we, coming uh... from. Well, you're talking to two black black men, so uh, <laughs> we definitely get it. <laughs> um, all right, what did you like the most about this match, or like, or the one thing that really stood out to you about this match that you think they did well? Uh, just the use of the strap, like Roddy's tying him up and turning it into the uh, stronghold, and then uh, have the finish where he just wrapped his shit all the way up for the Anaconda Vice. Like these two got really good chemistry, and Roddy's just off the fucking charts in general. He may be the unsung hero of NXT. I mean, he never puts on a bad match. And then, I mean, anybody watching this show know this whole crew's love for Dexter Loomis. So yeah. I wish, I'm I'm glad that they kept it. It was a little mixture of a little bit of everything, but I definitely loved, uh, I love this match. Like, I mean, I just love both these wrestlers too. So for sure. it's an A for me, for sure. Jay, uh, what, what, what about you, man? What's the one thing you enjoyed or like really stood out to you about this match? I enjoyed the fact of the chemistry between them and the strap. That's what really, that was what really got me. Because in the beginning of the match, you see, um, you see Roddy trying to get out. And yeah, he uh, he actually jumped. Uh, literally Dexter literally just tugs him, and mm-hmm. Roddy just flies. And it, and it and it, and it didn't look stupid. It looked, yeah. it looked like Loomis actually flung, flung him, and I was like. Shit. And the clothesline at the end where he got a uh, fish when he came in the ring and they, he just stretched it out enough. Yeah. The clothesline, Bobby, like, that was a good point, Jay. Like, yeah, they actually, it was that third member of this match and it actually, it, it, it was it was dope. Like, it was, like I said, it was definitely one of my favorite matches. And it's not Everything an easy thing to do. Everything in this match was extremely right. fluid. Mm-hmm. That, that's why I was so happy to watch this match. Like, granted, I, like, I had a little moment where my daughter was actually watching the match. Mm-hmm. And and I mean, granted, she was like, "Daddy, I, I want you, I was like, I want to watch you wrestle again." I'm like, "In due time, baby. In due time." <laughs> Damn, man. But she was watching it, and she was like, "Daddy, I don't want you to go against Dexter Loomis." I, like, <laughs> I wouldn't watch him either, Jay. You're a big guy. I love you. I believe in you, but I don't want you to be anywhere near Dexter Loomis. Uh, I got. I just found a little bit more love for him too. I, I don't know if you guys. I listened to the. Uh, Corey Graves podcast, and he had Road Dog on. He was talking how his main pet project before he switched to his new role was Dexter Loomis, mm. and then working together and stuff. And he said that Dexter Loomis is one of the most creative minds he's ever worked with in his twenty-something year history of like wow. being in the business and shit. And he was like, "With the best is yet to come." He said that we've got so much stuff planned. They said by the end of the summer, well, our minds gonna be blown about. The Dexter Loomis character, so I'm definitely looking forward. Oh to man, it. now you got me hyped and geeked for what's next to come for Dexter Loomis. Uh, yeah. Since you guys shared your favorite spots and what you liked about the match, I liked when they took the match outside the ring, battled all the way to the top of the stage, and they teased Roderick Strong go- being put into the back of that car trunk that's a part of the prop of the <laughs> stage setup. I thought that was really really good. Roddy like pulling again, great chemistry with the rope, like with the strap pulling Loomis and using the strap as an advantage to help him get some leverage, eventually does hit the Olympic Slam on the ramp, and tr- that's when he starts to get control. That's when he does hit the stronghold, like, went, went and ties him up like a kind of like cattle, uh, and tries to tap him out, almost gets it. He uh, Dexter Loomis does end up crawling to the outside, escaping that. That's when Bobby Fish comes in, strikes the the the, the leg of Dexter Loomis, which it was someone pointed this out on Twitter that was kind of weird. Why did Bobby Fish wait so long to attack and get into the ring when it was no DQ? But you know yeah. that's just nitpicking. And why did he hide? He kicked his leg and then hid. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> it, that that to me made. And no then sense. the refs and the refs said it right after he did that, like, oh, it doesn't matter. This is a no DQ match and. 
he was hiding behind the stairs. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? Get in there and kick his ass. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. So yeah, it was uh it was it was pretty funny. I I I a continuity huh. shit, Bobby you know. Fish was scared too. I'd yeah. be scared. I'd be scared of Dexter Williams the way he looked at people. Hey, can we ju- can we just can we just give Roger Strong his flowers on how how awesome he makes the Olympic Slam, bro? Like he does yeah. that shit. Probably he may do it better than Kurt. He might do it better than him. I'm be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm gonna have to see a side to side comparison. Uh, like, I, I'll give him. I'll give him his his due. He, he ain't, ain't nobody. And- and he's done it to some big ass dudes, maybe not so much in NXT, but other Ring of Honor and other places, bro. Like that man, that man perfected that that move. Yeah, he he really has. It's pretty fluent, and I, I yeah. Honestly, I would like him to use that as a finisher. It's so good. Me too. Like yeah. It's just weird to see it as a regular move. That's why. Yeah, but, yeah, but he also, I mean, everybody has 19 moves now, so yeah, I mean, true. But I mean, even still, though, like the Olympic Slam was like something you knew, either you knew, hey, it was about, it was about to go down, mm-hmm. Kurt about to put the ankle lock on him, or he about to, or or it's over with. I mean, but let's be honest, Olympic Slam as a finisher, though, I mean, yeah, I mean, is it any worse than? Other finishes out there. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Okay, look, 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 looking at you, Chris Jericho, with that Judas over. effect. <laughs> Judas <laughs> effect, the attitude adjustment. Over. There's, there's a the the fucking shiniest wizard. That's the lamest fucking finisher ever, and the last shot. And I love y'all know how much I love Adam Cole. Those finishes are terrible, but yeah. On to the next. <laughs> uh, but like you guys mentioned, Bobby Fish does come out. He does help out Roderick Strong initially, but gets caught up in the with the strap once the, there's like a struggle between Loomis and Roderick Strong. They extend the, the strap, and that's at that very moment. The timing was just flawless and beautiful, and they, yeah. and Bobby Fish just gets caught up in it, gets taken down. Loomis uses the strap to secure the win via submission, locks it in real tight. I think it's called the silence or... Into the silence. He calls it silence. silence. That's, all, that's what it's called. Silence. Perfect. Perfect. I love that Dexter Loomis picks up the win here. I'm curious to see where this continues. Obviously, he can't keep beating Roderick Strong and continue feuding with Roddy. Maybe he goes on. I feel like at this point they're gonna they're gonna have one at least one more match, and Roddy's gonna like overcome that one match. And I don't see- think he is, man. I think he's gonna get called up to main roster, still being like traumatized by Dexter Loomis. <laughs> <laughs> um, That'd be funny. But like you like you were speaking uh, speaking the matches that just se- don't seem to end feuds that don't seem to end. We had a backstage interview with the Garganos. Uh, I forget the interview. It was like interview bot number three tries to get Candice's like feelings and thoughts on how the match went about. She's like, "Oh, that wasn't fair. They ganged up on me, and that's why I lost." But then she sees Mia Yim in her peripherals and goes in. <laughs> she goes and attacks Mia. And then Johnny's like admiring her work. He's like, God damn it, that's my woman. That's my wife. <laughs> I freaking love her. Like almost like gets like aroused by the fact that he went and yes. found Mia and just attacked her. Um then we we cut back to where the brawl is actually taking place. We see Isaiah Swerve Scott in the middle of it trying to break things Let's up. Let's go. Johnny gets in his face, and then they start getting into it. Officials come in, try to break it up. Shout out to Scotty Tuhati right there looking like a Shawn Michaels 2020 clone. Because I, I wasn't sure if it was Shawn Michaels or Scotty Tuhati. I thought it was Shawn Michaels. I saw the hat, the camel hat. I thought it was Shawn. No, see, funny story. Uh, last time I went to an NXT show in, in Milwaukee, we saw Scotty Tuhati. We thought it was HBK, but it was actually Scotty. He just looks very <laughs> similar to Sean now. Tan, short tan, where's camo? Exactly. Where's camo? Has a ball cap and tan, has a scruffy beard. Totally. Uh, my question to you guys, do you think this was done to set up a match between Isaiah Swerve Scott and Johnny Gargano? Why else? Hell not? yes. And I'm, you know I'm here for it. Let's go. Do you uh, Quickly, do you guys think it will happen next week or like afterwards? I think it'll be afterwards, Jay, unless they try and set up some uh, like tag well, team shit. Thing. We don't know what we don't know that we don't know all the matches for for next week. We only know the the, the main attraction matches. We just know three for next week. Yeah. yeah. How many were on this show? Five or six? Uh, we had five matches. Five. We had the main event. We had the strap match. We had the the opener, the fatal four way. We had uh, what else? <sighs> Trying blanks. Oh, the handicap match. And uh, the Thatcher match, so that was five. Yep. So we only have three announced for next week, so two more matches. And two matches were actually teased. Another match that was teased was a Cameron Grimes in the Cameron Grimes interview. And 
the interviewer asked him, hey, what do you think about Damian Priest basically calling you out and challenging you for a rematch next week? And Cameron Grimes like, ha, I'm not facing Damian Priest. I've already beat him. I got nothing left to prove to him. Actually, right now, I'm making it official. Like the winner of next week's match between uh, Keith Lee and Adam Cole I, I, I am already declaring myself the number one contender. I'm going to beat either one of them and be the new double champion it's or something. It's grind time, baby. It's grind time. <laughs> I fucking love him, man. He's the only guy yeah. He's the only guy other than Sebastian with a southern accent that I love. <laughs> um, but next up, we had another guy that I really love, and I love this faction in, in general. El Legado del Fantasma. They come out. They cut a dope ass promo, and like you've been calling for, RN, this is a a Latino guy, a foreigner speaking great English and uh, being allowed to speak proper English and not just broken English because that's what you assume his English would be. Is this a nice change of pace for you, man? This is this is I told you, event. This is what they've been looking for. This is his test run. Book it right now. He's going to be the face of Latino wrestling. In WWE, I'm for it. Man. He has some. He has every, all those other. I'm not saying that they're not dope. Like you know, we love Andrade and Berto, all of them. We love them, but their English is a I drawback, mean, and Alberto it is what it is. Berto can do a little bit more, hmm? little bit more but yeah, no, I'm not saying that he can. In the truth, Andrade no, and it, in the ring, in the ring, and as long as we have what we have, like our climate and everything, it is right now. I told y'all what it was. I've been saying this from the beginning. They gave all of them a chance. To have a run. And the thing that holds them all back is they're not fluent in English and Spanish. This guy is. Guarantee you this guy's going to have – he was not going to be in NXT long. Look it. I said it here first. Cool. I mean, I, I wouldn't put it past you. So let's talk about the the context of their promo. So they talk about the legacy of Lucha Libre and how it's basically turned into a sideshow now. How yeah. luchadors went from being – movie stars superheroes and role models and then now they've just become and being reduced to just some guys with masks that do flipping around (laughs) yeah so i thought that was really good strong points that he was making because if you go back to like the legacy and like the history of lucha libre like even like with the biggest one of the biggest names el santo this guy was a comic book guy uh, on comic books on movies on tv shows on commercials this guy was at what's the biggest thing in mexico and he was you know what this promo was you know what this promo is doing Mm. making americans hate him and the mexican and those latino speaking fans are going to eat his shit up bro i'm eating it up right now i want seconds i want thirds that's what i'm saying because listen what he he didn't say anything bad about mexican or latinos or lucha libre he told y'all our shit is better our shit is better than this it should be taken more seriously Fuck you if you don't believe it. And here's the thing. He has a proper motivation for why he does the thing that he does and why you see guys like a Joaquin Wild or a Raul Mendoza join forces with him because he's like, you know what? You're right. We were just like, we weren't taking seriously here on NXT beforehand. We were great luchadors back in the day. We're not being taken seriously. And that's why he took off the mask because it's like, we're not going to be some faceless guys with masks. We're not going to be someone to just like appease you and be some kind of sideshow. We're more than just the mask. The mask used to mean something, but right now you guys have desecrated what the mask actually means and turned it into a novelty thing. I when they go to Mex- when they get a chance to go to Mexico City, it's the top's gonna blow off that fucking building when Oof. he comes out. Oof. And they, they, they go on to say that they're going to redefine what it means to be a Lucha star and rebuild Lucha Libre in their image. And then he's like, specifically his image. And, I'm here for it. Uh, we lost your uh, your visual right there, uh, uh, Jay. Uh, I don't know what happened. We might be gone and might have just like completely like messed up this whole thing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, in the meantime, we're just going to roll with the punches. Uh Okay, Jay, we have you back. Great, perfect. Uh, Howdy. While I fix things up real <laughs> quick, uh, Jay, why don't you chime in on this, man? What did you like? What did you think of this promo, the way it was delivered, and how do you feel about this new well, faction? I, 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 I think we've talked. All, of, all three of us have talked about this because I've always been all for Lucha Libre. Uh, you know, me being a, like I said, me being a wrestler, I'm not. 
I, I don't study the Lucha Libre style because, you know, we're big guys, so, you know, we don't do too much of that flipping or, you know, whatever, but it's more so uh, the, the, the legacy of Lucha Libre. Um, I love it. I love the idea. I love the fact that uh, Santos Escobar is, is, is leading a charge for Lucha Libre uh, wrestling. I love it. I, I enjoy and, and, every moment of it. And here's the thing. I'm probably biased. I'm admitting this right now. But at this point, it's like this man is fighting a crusade that I believe in. I'm almost, he's basically my Seth Rollins. He's my Messiah. And I'm like, you're 100% right, man. Screw Drake right. Maverick. Forget that guy. He has his job. He has everything all set up. Let's focus on making Lucha Libre respectable again. He's turned me, man. I, I, but I would be there. There would, I would be there on heart hard joining the nation, bro. For sure. I uh, couldn't speak a lick of fucking Spanish, but I'm down for the cause, bro. Hey, man. <laughs> I'm hey, all that. for it, yeah. To, to answer your question, man, I'm all for it. I, I've, we, like I said, we talked about it. Like we, we knew what the outcome of all of this was gonna be. Mm-hmm. We did. We knew it wasn't gonna be some stupid, you know, uh, stupid gimmick that the WWE. My, my question is, who were the original? Who's the other two dudes, though? I, I'm just gonna assume they're like druids for the Undertaker, just some maskless. I know, type and that's what I don't want it to be. They need to have two more. I hate these damn three men. I know. Bruce, man, I hate I know. this shit. I know. Why can't they have, get a tag team, bro? Like, come on, something. Like, this is they gotta ride this out, especially if undisputed era is moving up. Mm-hmm. You need a you need a heel faction. It's all Three right. ain't gonna cut they it. Be, they can be the one that's running the show, man. It'll be all right, yeah, man. That's, there's, what, that's there's what I'm still, saying. They're still in their infancy of this faction. It's yeah. only been like around for like three weeks now. Give it a little bit more time. I you, you might be right in your like skepticism and you're like concerned that it's just going to be a three-man show it could be a good three-man faction but we still need to see the extra people show up yeah um i mean yeah it still could be a good three-man faction i mean like i said the shield was always a good three-man faction oh man yeah, you're gonna but... get some hate on social media by comparing el legado del fantasma with the shield well, well my thing is like if they had picked two stronger members of the faction that's my thing is like that okay that let them be your tag team and at least get one more other person like it, like that buddy or something, you know Murphy. Get him a Murphy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Need that buddy to be a United States champion or something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Well, he needs at least that se- that strong second because right. those two dudes are always going to be fucking like. Don't get me wrong, I mean they're dope, especially Raul Mendoza. Like I really love him, mm-hmm. but they're never they're going to be jobbers, bro. Like they're, I don't see them. We'll see. Uh, there's. Been- I hope I hope not. Like, I don't want to make it seem like I'm hating on them totally. Like right. I hope that they actually do give them. Like a run, and they do get to be like a mainstay, especially sure. if Undisputed Era goes. For sure. So going oh, yeah, back, man, like that'd be dope. Going going back to the segment, uh, in the middle of the promo, he gets cut off by Drake Maverick's music. He comes out. He is initially has like the neck brace on, but then removes it. I guess he's all good after like two weeks of being like put through a fucking table. And he goes, and I guess he never learned anything from when he did get put through a table because he gets jumped. Just by Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wilde, that's all it takes to take out Drake Maverick. And I like that Santos Escobar, he's basically saying, like, I told you last week, I'm untouchable. Like, like I like that that's his thing. I'm like, I'm untouchable. Yeah. I'm Santos Escobar. I'm untouchable. You can't touch me because I got these guys behind me. And it does look like Escobar's about to like hit the final blow on Drake Maverick and take him out one more time. And for some reason, Breezango come out to make the save. I'm not hating on it. I just don't understand it. There's no continuity there. There's no like established like I mean, friendship or connection between Breezango no, and Drake. Give but if you, if give well, me. not even that. Like if you's gonna throw a dude in there with Breezango and him, like Drake Maverick, like fits he the makes fucking sense. Deal. Like, he, he makes fits. sense. I mean, he definitely fits with them. Like I just kind of no, wish they kind of did like a Jake Atlas thing. I just kind of wish they basically it. They're giving him something to do. <laughs> like, like it's, what is the about it like this? What has Breezango done besides the whole situation with uh, Imperium? I mean, they haven't done much, but that's my whole concern. It's like we haven't seen a connection or like a relationship between yeah. Maverick and Breezango. Like we saw that with Jake Ellis. All you had to do is just cut like a video and put it on YouTube and then share it on social media. Like, hey, man, we respect you for what you did, man. Hey, man, we're happy for you. Establish that there's a friendship there. So it makes sense. 
it, it's kind of like if I'm getting jumped, it makes sense for you guys to come in and make the save. But if some random dude from the streets, like if, if I don't know where fucking Randy Orton comes in and saves me, you're, you're going to be like, okay, that's kind of cool that Randy Orton came out, but why is he saving well, Vince? Why? Like, are they, are they friends? Do they game on the weekend or something? Like, what's, <laughs> what's going on here? So, um, y'all play golf on the side or something? Like, let me know something. I mean, I mean, like, that's all I, that's the only nitpick there. I guess the only reason they did this is because they wanted to set up a match without having to give up the Cruiserweight title match so soon. So in the yeah. meantime, they're going to do a six-man tag match. And Breezango's like, hey, you may, you guys may have gotten away from us tonight, but there's no escaping us next week. Alluding to the fact that the match was going to happen. The match, spoiler, does take place. It does get confirmed. Breezango and Drake Maverick versus El Legado del Fantasma. Next week, six-man tag match. Two big names that, like, the... The main roster, the casuals will know in Breezango. They know Drake Maverick, and it's going to help establish a legal of the Fantasma. I just kind of hope it's not Breezango that takes the pin here, which they probably will, and most likely it's going to be Breeze. Yes, sir. Uh, next up, another match that was set up uh, this week on tonight's episode, and it's going to be taking place next week, a street fight between Candice Array and Mia Yim. Honestly, I don't know which way it's gonna go. My money's on Candace, but I wouldn't be surprised if they go with Mia here. Guys, do you gotta Yeah, you gotta she's from the streets, so probably me and him, I guess. I mean <laughs> You okay, said that with right. so we, no, we little wait, 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 enthusiasm, wait, wait, bro. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. We at least got like all right, all right. I know you be Nah, sure. shut your dry snitching no, ass bro. up, bro. No, hold up, no, no, no. <laughs> it needs to be said. It needs to be said. At least tonight, you can at least say me. And you I did. Friend. No, I did. I did. I said she carried the first part of that fatal forward. She carried that match. Yeah, she, she did. did. She, definitely. I don't have a problem with her in the ring. I think she's dope and she's a bigger girl too. So she kind of can go both ways as far as like her uh, style goes, especially. Said. Bro, on, don't, I'm, don't sorry. Get us, I'm sorry. Don't bro. get us me too, bro. Don't get us me too, bro. Chill. <laughs> but my, my thing is her character. She does not have a character. You can say she does all she wants, but just all having right. some catchphrases. We how many times y'all gonna make me do this on every fucking show, Jay, bro? Jay man, come on. Why'd you get him going? Like we can't have him going the same tirade every episode. First of all, I had to get him going because this is his first time back on the show. So <laughs> it has been about a month since I I went on my Mia Yim. Yeah, All right, so. we we have been keeping you neutered on that subject. For a it wouldn't be a show without a a, a RN rant about uh, me and you. Come on now, for sure. And That's then uh, obviously the match we've all been anticipating for about three weeks now. The main event for next week: winner take all, champion versus champion, Keith Lee versus Adam Cole. Quick prediction, guys, and then we're gonna go into the main event because obviously we need to get up early in the morning. Uh, I'm not trying to be up too late. RN, who do you think should or will win this match? I wish it was Adam Cole, but it's definitely going to be Keith Lee. I mean, it's time. Wait, you're saying you want Adam Cole to retain? Yeah. Okay, I'm not I'm not touching that. I do. I'm, I'm not I'm not unpacking that whole thing right there. Uh It's not it's not to be it's not like what you think is I hate when they do these double like winner take all fucking matches like I hate that shit. Like either let him lose the belt and keep it moving or whatever like I said, but that's just my opinion, but it is definitely it's Keith Lee's time. It's it's time to pass the torch. For sure, I get you. Uh, Jay, do you do you have a pick here? Do you have a prediction for this match? I mean, I'm I'm definitely going for Keith Lee because uh, I mean, the prophecy. The prophecy. You've been <laughs> talking about that prophecy for like three four months now, man. Hey, bro. Hey, hey. No, he's been talking about it since January, bro. Since I started the show. Have I been wrong? Though? <laughs> Let me, let me, let me, let me rephrase it. You haven't, you haven't been wrong, but your time frames were way the fuck off. It don't yeah. matter, though. I just can't <laughs> the titles. Jay. All of them were going to lose the titles. Jay's it like only the... took seven months, but yeah, you was right. <laughs> Jay, Jay's like the Mayan calendar. Thought the world was ending in 2010, but it's actually ending in 2020. 2020, yeah. <laughs> That's, That's what I'm saying. You, I'll give you your props. You was right. You called it. You might be able to, the time frame's a little off, but you did call it. Uh, me personally, uh, like, I hope. I knew, uh, I knew, me personally, I do hope it's Keith Lee that does pick up the win next week. I think it's the right time tonight. Illustrated that you can make these like, like quarantine shows, these COVID shows look and feel very special. Especially NXT has really done a good job with that. With the thing, the only house, thing I hate about 
in, in NXT though, like I hate that they black out the crowd. Like let's, yeah. I want to see the crowd. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. my only gripe of it's NXT. You know what? That ass. I will say this, Vince. You are right. They've been doing a really good job of kind of like uh, WWE has been doing a really good job of making these COVID uh, nineteen shows actually quite decent. <laughs> Yeah. Um, they've been doing a really good job, especially like SmackDown that just came, uh, just passed. How they did the whole tribute to to Taker, it mm-hmm. was dope. Like I, I think it was uh, it was pretty dope. I think uh, I think the stage setup they've they've done a great job to make it feel and stand out from a regular NXT episode, and I think it feels like a big show. Like, and I think it's it's the right time to pull the trigger on Keith Lee. Uh, quick, let's let's just jump right into the main event. Io Shirai versus Sasha Banks. Uh, uh, Sasha and Bailey arrive in a really dope ass fucking car, very similar and paying homage to how Sasha used to roll up to her takeover matches in NXT. Sasha busted out a brand new uh, uh, American flag, Kurt flag Angle's in- inspired one. Baby. Yeah, she she out here looking like 2020 Kurt Angle. She looked amazing. <laughs> she brought she busted out her her dog Ryu. Like on the whole nine yards. Uh, I kind of wish Io Shirai kind of like went the next level and brought out some new gear, but she looked dope as well. Uh, this this guys this match has been a dream match for, of mine since like 2015 16. I have no words for how much I enjoyed this match. I loved everything about this. I have no critiques, even the small little botches. It didn't bug me. I was in cloud nine. I enjoyed everything about this. Thumbs up all around. Nothing bad to say about this match. I mean, right, you got you go. You go. I, I definitely want to hear hear what you think, man. No, I, feel, I I honestly feel the same way. Like you said, it was a few botches on both ends, but I mean, like overall, the spots, the story, the transgression, the of of the moves, the progression of the story they were telling in the ring, that fucking parrot spot that EO did on the ropes, the uh, the power bombs. It, oh my god, bro! Like every. This match was way. This was. I knew it would be a good match. I thought it'd be all right. Like good. I didn't think it would be a great match. To me, it was a great match. And I think what helped it that a lot of NXT matches on TV don't get is the fact that commercials kind of like really like take you out yeah. of a match. Sometimes that can happen. That didn't happen in this match. It was commercial free from the moment the yeah. bell rang, and I I'm glad that that was a thing. Jay, uh, wh- like, what can you add about this match that we haven't already said? The storytelling, the storytelling was good. Yeah. Like all this, this whole, this whole, except the whole situation with, uh, uh, with, uh, Breezango, which we, like I said, we, we don't. Yeah. Um, everything in that story, it told a story. Like, you know, uh, Bailey and Sasha, they're coming in the NXT. You know, to show everybody that they're the best. EO's the new up and coming champ. Uh, you know, she pretty much gets the best of the 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 the, the assholes and Bailey and Sasha. She gets a little bit of help from Asuka. You know, I like I love it. everything works out. It's it meshes together for sure. It, I totally agree, right. man. Uh, let's touch upon a, a couple quick points, Aaron. I know you mentioned some of them. I loved how, like, when they were in the top uh, top rope, top turnbuckle, it looked like Yo Shirai was going to hit Sasha Banks with a devastating move. Bailey goes to the car that's part of the set and honks the horn to distract Yo. It works, allowing Sasha to capitalize. Throughout the match, you see Bailey just being a nuisance and just being annoying. And that's that's just like part of the character. I love Bailey. This is probably the best Bailey I've seen in years. Especially the issue with the uh, with the belt when she went uh, when uh, Eo had the cross face on her and she throws the belt at the ref. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll get to it. We'll get to that spot. So the next sp- big spot I want to uh, want to address the one that RN brought up was she goes for a springboard attempt. And then she botched it, botched it initially, goes for it a second time. Sasha catches her at the apex of her about to springboard. And then she hits like a high jumping, high jump kick, stuns her and just runs the ropes. Sunset powerbomb into the pex- pexiglass. 
drops her on the on on the mat. I, it looked vicious. It looked dope. Bailey and Sasha celebrated after the fact. They they're back in the ring. Sasha goes for the frog splash. It is reversed by Io Shirai into the crossface. It looks like Sasha's about to tap. This was really really good. And like you were mentioning, Jay, that's when Bailey comes in, tosses the tag team titles for Sasha Banks to grab. She tosses one of the titles. It distracts the referee. He tries to get the title out of the situation because it's an it's a non-title singles match, so there is still DQ. As he's uh, getting the title out of the way, uh, that's when Bailey goes ahead and just strikes. Uh, Io she Shirai. gave her a fucking punch, bro. That forearm was nasty. Yeah, she hit her with a forearm. Uh, she hit Io with the forearm, allowing uh, allowing uh, Sasha Banks to break out of the submission. After that, she leaves one of the tag titles in the corner for Sasha Banks to use. She goes to the other side of the ring to di- try to distract the ref and take the the, the, in, the first initial tag title out of the ref. Try to like leave an opening for Sasha Banks to use her tag team title to strike Io Shirai so that she can pick up the victory. As she's about to get up and use it, like you mentioned, Jay, Asuka comes in, grabs onto the title. And it was perfect. I was not expecting Asuka to come into it. My question into this match is like, well, Io can't lose cleanly here. Sasha yeah. can't lose cleanly here because she's got a title match coming up. Io just won the title. How are you going to book yourself into a situation where it's not oh, a, like... We'll a, like no yeah. problem whatsoever. <laughs> Dude, you add Asuka, you sprinkle a little bit of Asuka anywhere, and it's going to be pure gold. So she goes and grabs the title, and she hits... Sasha Banks with the green mist, allowing Io to roll her up for with the schoolgirl. One, two, Sasha kicks out. Io's like, nah, this is it. I'm done. This is it like I'm done with this match. Go time. She hits her with like an upper cut slap thing. Yeah, that motherfucking oh, you could slap. <laughs> yeah, she out here looking like street like she playing Street Fighter and just completely KO'd Sasha Banks. Then goes uh, uh, follows that up by hitting a wrecking ball drop kick onto Bailey. She falls to the floor. She goes now, to the top Now that row. wrecking ball drop kick now. Yes. Looked like it hit her dead in her face. And then Bailey oh, went ahead and yeah. just like flopped and sold it like a fucking fish, like she should have. She made it look <laughs> devastating. That's just like again like great, 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 great sequence there. I- Io Shirai. Dan goes ahead, attempts her finisher, the moonsault, hits it. One, two, three. She beats Sasha Banks, retains. At the end of the show, you see Io Shirai celebrating with Asuka as there's a little pyro in the background. I think this is good. This pro- possibly sets up a tag match between Io and Asuka versus Bailey and Sasha Banks. I think that would you know be what? a match I would want to see. You know what this thing just made me think of is I don't want to see them break up. Who, I Bailey, think that's what she, I Bailey, think that's Sasha? what should be the swerve is they never break up. Why can't they be this two woman power trip and ride this shit out? Like why? Like we're all friends. You don't break. I know wrestling is wrestling, but you don't just fucking just turn your back on your best friend all the fucking time. Best friends fight, you get together, but you still ride or die no matter what. Why can't they just ride this out? Like who says that it has to be that stereotypical <laughs> wrestling is wrestling? Good friends have to break up, bro. Let them ride this shit out. They are fucking. Dope together. Their chemistry, they know each other. Everything they do, like, they're right. two of the best women in the world. Like, let them stay together. Why not? You only got one set of tag belts anyway. I'd be, I'd be down for that, bro. Like, I, yeah. I, I, 10% I'd be down for Honestly, I think that's the move. I think that's why they put the tag titles on her. I think it is. That, I think and that's you get them on both shows. On all three shows, because if you see on Raw, they're lining up tag teams. It looks like they might be doing Natalia and Lana. They might be doing Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot. On NXT, you have Shotzi and Tegan. You have Dakota Kai and Reina and Raquel Gonzalez. You have options. They're trying to line up all these tag teams for and, and give reason and excuses for Bailey and Sasha to show up. I see and you're giving Bailey and there. Sasha, yeah, and you're giving Bailey and Sasha what they've always wanted. They want to work. Yeah, they they don't they don't care about the bullshit. They just want to work and it be meaningful what they're doing. You can't do anything better than this. One of them's the world champ, and the and they're the tag team champs. I say they let this shit ride out as long as until we get back going and we got some real Bam. rosters to pick from and and fans ride this. I know that's what they're gonna do anyway as far as them breaking up. But I'm talking about even after that, leave them together. Why can't they be the two woman power trip? Like sure. I said, I think it's a great idea. I feel like. That's something that they should do. 
especially considering the fact that they work well together. They work well together, and on top of that, they're they're amusing and entertaining, as Vince said. Fast. As, as as we talked about on SmackDown, that they were they were uh, amusing and and hilarious to to it's, deal it's with. It's almost oh. like they've gone ahead and taken what we've done and build upon it and just show it on NXT, Raw, and SmackDown. It's they're bringing our energy and showing it on WWE programming. They're the. It's almost like they're friends in real life. Yeah, exactly. Who would have guessed? <laughs> Who would have guessed? <laughs> Uh, but overall, guys, I think tonight's episode, night one of NXT's Great American Bash, was a success. A thumbs up for me. Uh, do you guys agree? Yeah, solid show. For solid sure. show, man. Can't solid. wait. Uh, dude, like, I'm glad you're back, man. We're glad to have you back. Obviously, we, they can find you on your socials at Mr8984. Send him all your hate on that me again stuff. He will sit there and talk to you hours. Check out Mean Jelly. Like hours. Show him some love. Show him we. Yeah, you can show him all the hate you want about me again, but show this man some love. You know what? This man is amazing. He, he's he, he's. 110%, y'all. 110 fucking percent. For real. Can't be nothing else. Let's go. Check out his uh, his uh, YouTube channel, Mean Jelly Beans Productions. It's right there in the background, Facebook. yo. That is back there in the yeah. background. Yeah. <laughs> like, subtly <laughs> plugging his own shit. Uh, go ahead and find, and find them <laughs> on Facebook as well. Mean Jelly Bean Memes. Funny, funny stuff. I say that every single time. I want to say, again, thank you for WrestlingNewsWorld.com. That that's where we can find us, but you can also find us on YouTube.com, wherever you consume all your audio podcasts. Make sure you give this episode a download. Hit that thumbs up button. Comment down below what you thought of the matches tonight and your predictions for next week's on night two for Great American Bash. Mm-hmm. Turn on the notice, the bell notification, so you know when the brand new episode drops. And just thank you again. Just forever and always use hashtag SmackNXT whenever you want to be Let's featured go, right here on the show. Thank you all. We'll catch you guys next week.